Well, hey, everybody, and welcome to our Google Hangout. It's such a great day here in the Northeast. We're, we're all in that Memorial Day holiday mood. And the name of this Hangout is How to Avoid the Three Most Common Home Recording Mistakes. I'm your host, Susan Berkeley from GreatVoice.com, the Great Voice Company. And I'm doing this as a special thank you to you, <laughs> the subscribers to my uh, video easing and you know you're on my list because you care about voiceover and you want to get started in the business improve your career which is really awesome so I've got a great program planned for you today I've got a very special guest who is our own audio engineer Christopher Fox and he is the man with the plan he really really knows his stuff and you know the reason that we're doing is this is because there are some major mistakes that we're seeing not just our students make but a lot of voice talent out there around their home studios so we want to solve those for you right now and this google hangout is perfect for you if you are a newcomer to the voiceover business or maybe you are like many of our students on what i like to call the runway to retirement that's that period of time in your life where you're preparing for retirement you want to make sure you have all your ducks in a row uh, maybe you just want a great work from home money hobby, you know, make some extra money on the side. Maybe this could turn into a full time career, or maybe it's something you just want to do uh, from your basement or on the road part time, have a ball doing it and make some extra money. And maybe you are one of those people that always wanted to do voiceover, but whatever the reason you're here, we're here for you. And let's get started. So on today's call, you're going to discover how to resolve the number one most annoying time-sucking mistake that voiceover beginners make when you start a home recording session. Does your playback sound weird? It can. And this number, the second thing we're going to help you with is how to ensure that your software and computer are compatible for broadcast quality audio each and every time. And finally, how to avoid common mistakes exporting and sending your files so every audition and job arrives in the best possible quality. And at the end of this Hangout, I'm going to have some opportunities for you if you want to take this further, grow and develop your voiceover career with some very special bonuses available only on this Hangout today. So stay tuned. So let's talk a little bit about the transformation that's possible for you in voiceover. And I just want to let you know about some of the people that have been our students, some of the talent that we work with on a regular basis here at our production company at The Great Voice Company. There's a lady named Buffy O'Neill. Now, Buffy is a voice talent we've been working with for years. And what I love about her story is that uh, she started out as a singer. She was a nightclub singer. And then she wanted to have kids and you know the hours just didn't work out for so she started a voiceover career she built a beautiful studio at home right off her master bedroom and she is now working nine to five every day she's got a nanny that watches the kids if she needs to take off for a few hours to go to one of the kids soccer games or whatever it is she's totally free to do so but she's got a thriving career and it's all from home she's been doing it for years you hear her voice all over the radio i think she lives in south carolina down south somewhere like that and we use her for years and our, our clients love her and then there's another one of our students named art rosenbaum now art was a corporate trainer and he was also on the road but in this case he was going to europe every two seconds and was never around for his son's uh um hockey games now as some was, when art was missing some of the best years of his life so after careful discussion with his wife he decided that he was going to start get started in voiceover work from home work closely with me he was in my mentor program and after about a year or two we got him going and he booked an e-learning program where he was able to almost completely replace his income working from home. It was a major, major e-learning program in his industry. And that was huge for him. He got to be home with his family, he got to be home with his kids. Then there's came to our boot camp 
because uh, she was an airline pilot. And unfortunately, she had a congenital problem, a problem with her hip where she needed to be on pain medication. She's fine, but it prevented her from flying. So starting a home-based voiceover business was perfect for her. She is doing so well. Her career has just taken off. She's doing all kinds of voiceovers, audiobooks, you name it, and all from the comfort of her beautiful home studio. Then there's David Brower another graduate of one of our boot camps. Now, David had a, a great corporate job in marketing for the automobile industry. And then uh, he, he hit a, bad, a stretch of bad luck. Within a short period of time, he not only lost his job, but he was diagnosed with prostate cancer and had a stroke. And after he recovered, he's fine now, fortunately, he thought that this was the opportunity for him to start his home-based voiceover business he did. His business is thriving. He's doing terrifically. He's a Harley rider and he goes on the road with his wife and they travel all over the country. He packs his home studio on the back of the Harley. He speaks on behalf of prostate cancer awareness. I mean, his life is so rich. It's so beautiful, so full. And it all started with that decision to go have a home-based voiceover business. He's doing terrific. Then we've got Veronica Shea. Now, Veronica Shea is a voice talent that we work with. Um, it also came to one of my boot camps, and we ended up uh, hiring her as, as a talent. She's bilingual, English and Spanish. Her, even though she's American, her Spanish is so good. People can't tell the difference between her and a native speaker, and we've been using her for years on many of our productions. She's got another full-time job. She does this on the side, but voiceover for her is vacation money. So every year, she takes fabulous vacations with the money she makes from her voiceover career. And I know how much I pay her, so I know it's a nice, it's a nice chunk of change. So those are just a few examples. I mean, this, this opportunity is for you if you want an active, secure retirement, if you are looking for autonomy, maybe you want to be your own boss, peace of mind if you want to look forward to going to work every day, if you want the world's shortest commute down to your basement or into that spare bedroom, if you want a thriving side business where you call the shots, or if you just want to realize a dream, something that you've been wanting to do for really long, you are in the right place. So I do need to talk to you a little bit about what can happen if you do nothing. I mean, the worst thing that you can have in your life is regrets, right? at the end of your life that you didn't follow through on an opportunity, those should have, would have, could have, what might have been the lost opportunity. And you know, when this is something you really have been wanting to do and you don't take action, every day that you wait takes you farther and farther away from your goals instead of closer. And you know, it's pretty anxious retiring. Uh, if you don't have all your ducks in the row, I mean, a lot of people are facing that anxiety right now with um, the state of the economy and maybe their, their investments aren't doing as well and they, they either need to have a second source of income or they want to, they want to stay active. I mean, what do they say? You know, 60 is the new 40 uh, and they want to really enjoy the best years of their life doing something that they love without giving up security. So these are the types of things that you risk by not taking action on, on a voiceover career would be an opportunity that is the opportunity of your dreams. So I want to share my story with you. I came from a radio background. I, was, I, was, I worked in broadcasting. I was a disc jockey. And at the tail of my radio career, I got on the Howard Stern Show. Now, you know who he is. I was his traffic reporter, and I became like a cast member on the show. Very, very famous but was making almost no money. It was like $25,000 a year, if you can believe that. And I was living in New York City, and you can only imagine that's, that's you could barely live on that, if at all. And so what I had to do was work all of these day jobs around being on that show just to make ends meet. I was a waitress. I worked in a telemarketing firm because, you know, you got a good voice. You figure you're going to be on the phone. And what do I do? I, at the, the telemarketing firm, they have me selling deodorant crystals to funeral homes. Lovely people, but no career there. That didn't last very long. And then I got a great day job, I thought, 
for a singing telegram company called Renta Yenta. And I'll never forget, one day they, they called me up and they said, okay, Susan, we have a job for you. Come on in. But there's a costume you have to wear. It's a little elf costume because you're going to go sing invitations to department store buyers to come to a Christmas fashion show. Now, if you know anything at all about the fashion industry, you know that they're several months behind. So they're promoting winter in the summer. And it was summer. It was July in New York City. It was 100 degrees. It was humid. And I am walking down 7th Avenue dressed like a Christmas elf with a little elf hat and a little felt skirt. And I'm trudging there. I'm like practically in tears. I'm thinking about Am I doing? Why aren't things working out for me? So I decided that I wanted to get into voiceover, you know, make some extra income that way. I mean, heck, I was on the radio. I knew what to do. I had a good voice. And I did get some voiceover work. And one day I'm, but it was, you know, sporadic. And one day I'm leaving one of the sporadic jobs uh, with a male voice talent. And as we're down on the street, I am fishing in my pocket for a subway token while he's getting into a Jaguar sedan. And I say to myself, there's something wrong with this picture. He's obviously getting. I, we went to lunch. I, in fact, I asked him if I could take him to lunch. And he said, oh, no, 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 let me pay. I think he knew about my situation. We go to lunch and I say to him, Bob, Bob, what are your secrets? What are you doing that you're getting so much more work than I am? And he said, okay, look, I'm about to retire. This voiceover career has been very, very good to me. I have an incredible... We're going to have a vacation home in Florida. We're spending so much time with the grandkids. And now it's time for me to retire. And before I do, okay, I want to share my secrets with you. I want to pay it forward like people did for me when I was starting. And I said, oh, thank you so much. And he proceeded to open up his laptop. And he said, look, these are my prospects. These are my contacts. When I'm not working, I'm in are all these specific things that he did to build his business and a huge light bulb went off for me. I realized that if I wanted to be more successful in voiceover, it wasn't just a matter of learning to audition just a little bit better than everybody else. You know, that was like banging your head against the wall. It was futile because really they can only pick one person and it's so subjective about, about why you get picked for voiceover work. I realized after talking to Bob at that fateful lunch that if I wanted to be successful, I needed to learn how to sell and market better than everybody else. That was completely under my control. Whereas getting picked for voiceover wasn't under my control. It's completely subjective. But being a great marketer and a great salesperson was under my control, and that's what I did. I went to every seminar and workshop I could. I took my credit cards, which were, you know, I was struggling. I took those credit cards and I, I invested in, in a, um, a marketing seminar, and then I put it to work in my business, and everything changed for the better. Things exploded. I started booking like crazy. Uh, I became the voice of AT&T and Citibank, I grew my business, and the rest is history. So why am I teaching this to you today? Well, I now had a system that worked, and I had to share it because I knew people like me were struggling. They couldn't get their careers off the ground. They were doing thousands of auditions. They had no work. Uh, they, they've lacked the freedom, the autonomy that they wanted in voiceover. And, and I was experiencing that. I mean, I spend six weeks a year in Brazil. I take my, my laptop twice a year down to Brazil, and I, I work from there, and I go on anywhere I want, and, I, you know, I don't drop a stitch. So you need to know about me. I believe passionately in entrepreneurship. So I've had the Great Voice Company now for over 25 years, ever since I left radio, ever since I was on the Howard Stern Show. And I've just grown it and grown it. And not only do we have a thriving production company here, 
and you're about to meet Christopher Fox, my audio engineer, to talk to you about your home studio. But I've been able to help thousands and thousands of people just like you start and get into voiceover. And if you've been on our website, you've seen a lot of their testimonials. That is my pleasure. That's my mission in life. I believe passionately in entrepreneurship. This is something you can only do in America. And I believe that if you've been given the good fortune, like I have, that you have to give it back. You have to share. You have to lift people up. So that's what I do, why I do what I do, and why we're here today. So let's talk a little bit more about, uh, just to review in case you just came on, about what you're going to get out of today's Hangout. Number one, you're going to resolve the number one most annoying, time-sucking mistake that voiceover beginners make when starting a home recording session. And in a second, you're going to meet Christopher Fox, and he'll tell you what that is. If your playback is sounding weird, I mean, have you ever recorded something, you've got to play it back, and your voice just sounds completely odd, strange, like you're recording in another country, uh, what, what Chris is going to share with you will help ensure that your software and computer are completely compatible for broadcast quality each and every time. And then the third thing that you're going to learn is how to avoid the most common mistakes that people make when exporting and sending their files. It's not always just a matter of attaching an MP3 file and pressing send. You need to make sure that every audition and every recording that you do arrives in the best possible quality. So that's what you're going to learn. So now I want to introduce Chris Fox. Chris is the audio and video production manager at The Great Voice Company, and he's been working with us for several years now. We love him. He has over 15 years experience in audio, audio engineering, post-production sound design, location recording, and video production. He's worked with M NBC, CBS, MTV, ESPN, the NFL Network. He's mixed films that have been uh, seen at the Cannes Film Festival and Tribeca Film Festivals. And he's even worked with Led Zeppelin. He has even worked with Led Zeppelin. He studied audio at the Recording Institute of Technology in LA where he learned his craft and turned his passion for audio into his career. So Chris, it's all yours. Hey Susan, how are you? I'm great. Can you hear me? Yeah, you sound great. Can I'm gonna mute, mute my microphone. Okay. Go ahead. Hi everybody. I hope everyone can see me. Can you hear me, Susan? I hear you and I see you. You look great. Okay, great, great, excellent. Well, hi everybody. My name is Chris, and uh, let's get right to it. The first thing in uh, starting off recording, the major problem is not having uh, the computer recognize the microphone. So when you plug in your microphone, it just doesn't mean that your computer is going to recognize it. You have to make sure that your computer recognizes it. So right now I'm going to actually share using the blue spark from our good friends over at Blue Microphones. Uh, for this demo and I'm going to share my screen with everybody watching so you can see exactly how to uh, configure your microphone with your computer. Now we're on a PC right now but I'll go over briefly if you're using a Mac how to do this as well. So I'm going to set up my screen share really quickly. Okay, I hope everybody can see my screen. Can you see my screen Susan? Yes. Oh, no, I couldn't. Actually, I just saw me. So try it again. Okay. I'm going to. Now, can you see it? Yes. I Excellent. See. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is if you're on a PC, you first want to take the end of the USB microphone, which is right here, and plug it into your computer. If you have okay, a. So I'm not seeing your screen. You're, you're, you'll see it right now. That's right. You see it right here? Okay, there we go. Okay, the first thing you want to do is take your USB microphone and plug it into your computer. And then you want to come down to the bottom left-hand side of the windows and go to your control panel. When you open your control panel, you want to go to sound. And then when you go to sound, this uh, window will, will come up. And there's a, several different options in this window, but all you really need to know is playback <laughs> and recording. Now, playback on this tab right here is for where 
the sound is coming out of if you're listening to iTunes or Windows Media Player or whatever you're re, uh, listening to music on or listening to your voice on. <laughs> what you want to do is you want to click on recording right here. Now, see, when I plug the microphone in, it's already recognizing the microphone right here. But most of the time, so I have a webcam, which I'm uh, speaking to you on right now. Most of the time, it will look like this when you plug in your, when your microphone. Your microphone is plugged in, but it's not reading it. And you can see right here as, as I'm talking, I'm tapping the microphone, that the levels are going up, but it's, it's not clicked green. Right now, the computer is recognizing what, you, what you're hearing me through, which is the, um, which is the, the webcam. So what, what you want to do is you want to click on the microphone. If, today we're using the blue, the blue Spark, but if you're using an Apogee, if you're using the Blue Yeti, which is another great microphone that Blue makes, it, was, it will say the, the brand name of your microphone on here. So you just want to double click on here, make sure it's recognizing it, and then set to default. Now, once you set this to default, it'll basically, the computer is now recognizing the microphone. And all that, let me say this first, all laptops have internal microphones. So when Susan was referring to why do you sound like you're in a cave, the biggest problem that I see beginners starting out is that they plug their microphone in, they'll go into Audacity or SoundForge or Twisted Wave, whatever you're recording on, and they'll record it and it'll sound like they're in a cave. That's because it's it's picking up from the internal microphone and not from this blue microphone right here. So that's really the first step of, of getting your computer configured with your microphone. Um, should I move on to number two, Susan? Do you have any anything to, to, to add to that? Well, I just want people to know if they have questions, you can email them to talent at greatvoice.com. That's talent, T-A-L-E-N-T, -E at greatvoice.com. And Mark will grab your question. He'll bring it in uh, for me and Chris, so we'll be able to answer that for you. So go on ahead, Chris. What's the second point? Okay, the second point we have today is now that we have your uh, computer configured with the microphone, it's now very, very important to have your software configured with your microphone. Just because you set the computer up to it, it does, when you launch Audacity or Twisted Wave or whatever software you're using, it doesn't mean that your microphone is going to be recording into the software. So it's really the same problem, just in two different steps. First your computer, now the software. So I'm gonna share my screen again with everybody. Okay, now I'm going to launch Audacity. Now Audacity is a is free software. So <laughs> what I'm going to do is, <laughs> this is the transport for pause, for play, for stop, for rewind, fast forward, and record. Middle right here, this is really what you, this is the main, this is the most important thing right here. Right here, this is saying, to what the system is, you want it set to MME or whatever your computer is. Speakers, this is the output, this little icon, this speaker icon right here, that's for the speakers. And the microphone, see now how, how it says the microphone is set to my webcam. So that's what your that's that's what the software is is recording through. So if I were to actually record something with this right now, it would sound if I was Like I missed it because it's actually picking up from the webcam microphone. So the most important thing is you want to go to right here on your microphone icon, click on that, and then right here it says blue microphone. So you want to make sure you click that. Now we're all set, and the volume actually goes to default all the way down once you reset your microphone. So I would say put this at about about seven. I like to keep it at about 75, so it's not too low, not too hot. It's right in the sweet spot. I, I like to believe around 75%. So now I'm going to record, and you'll be able to see that I am recording. This is a check. This is a test. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. 
I'm going to play it back. And what I'll do right now for you guys as well is I'm going to switch back to the webcam and record just so you can hear the difference of what I'm talking about. This is a test. This is a test. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now listen to this playback. So we can hear the difference between what it should sound like And this is what it shouldn't sound like. Hey, Chris, the uh, the two examples didn't come through. Okay, it's, it's, pro yeah. it's probably it's probably a configuration with the the playback because we're using all the bandwidth with the with the webcam as well. So that's no problem. But if you can see the screen, this is just the most important thing: is the micro making sure your microphone is set to blue or whatever manufacturer but i definitely recommend using blue microphones because they're a great product it's american made and they very 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 good uh, quality customer service um, if you are using a mac you want to go to the top left let me switch off of this really quickly so you, everyone can see me i'm going to stop sharing my screen if you are using a mac you want to go to your top left apple icon you want to go to system preferences and then you want to go to sound and then after sound you want to go to input and you want to select the blue microphone input and that will help you get your um, system set up for Mac and Apple products anything else you'd like to add Susan not right now but hang on I think we have some questions coming in well, let me give you the technical ones okay Mark is bringing in some questions so Chris, all right questions for you um, Somebody has a, this is a somewhat of an advanced question, yeah, but let's answer it. Oh, here's some basic ones, and then we'll go to Brad's question after that. So the first question comes from Patty Smeets. Hi, Patty. Uh, Hi, what, Patty. <laughs> what microphone and software do you recommend? What microphone and software I recommend? Oh, that's a great question. Um, if you're a PC user, it for now about two months here and it sounds as any straight XLR condenser microphone that I have heard or the blue Yeti the, the blue products there really are really great microphones um, for software if you're a beginner I would say start off with audacity Just dabble with audacity because it's free and then if you if you really want to take your craft seriously I would switch over to SoundForge. That's what we use here at the Great Voice Company. It's very, very, very stable. Um, we've never had a crash. It, it saves file. It's very, very user friendly and very easy to use. Um, and then if you have a, a higher, higher budget, you want you can go for like a bottle blue microphone, which is a big fat condenser microphone. But start off, start off with the, with, the, with any any um, low level blue USB microphone in Audacity. I think that will get you started. Yeah, and, and on the Mac, uh, we like um, Twisted Wave. Apogee, yeah. Apogee mic and, and Twisted Wave as the software. Um, you know, and you can go up from there. The, the choice is almost unlimited, but those are some really great starters. Yeah, the, there's WavePad. There's, there's, there's so many free software, so many free softwares out there now that you can use, but uh, Audacity is has been around a while now, and it's free, and it's... It's there's a lot of good forums. If you just Googled like, you know, Audacity help, there's a lot there's a lot of good information out there for you. Great. So Chris, someone had a, a question with advice about eliminating breaths, and I don't they didn't specify it was from Margie. Hi Margie. She didn't specify whether or not that meant to edit the breaths out or not to put them in there in the first place. So let me give you you guys a really quick tip about while you're recording. Or two answers. Number one is how you place the microphone. So here's a, I happen to have a little mic on my desk. So when you talk, listen to the mic like this, uh, you want to make sure that you're a hands width away, unless you're going to close talk if you're doing something a little more. Into the breath from your mouth is going above the microphone or to one or the other side of it. And that will help eliminate 
uh, popping and also a breathy sound. And then when you're breathing, when you're on mic, just drop your jaw. So take take a um, an in breath through your mouth like this. See, you don't hear. You, then you don't hear like any kind of slurpy sound. So Chris, I'll turn it over to you. What can she do? What can Margie do technically to help get rid of uh, breaths? Um, I would say basically just ed edit them out. You could do it. Uh, two ways you can find where the breath is and then uh, mute it and then fade out of your last word and then fade in to your next word so it's kind of like a wave so it's ending on your last word into the mute out of the mute back into the uh, into the next word I'd say definitely play around with it because you, you'll find your sweet spot on where because yeah, everyone uh, reads different, reads their prompts differently, and everyone breathes differently. So once once you uh, keep you know keep toying around with it, you'll get you'll find your your own uh, method better than someone else will. Because everyone's method of editing is different. But definitely just uh, just mute out the breath, fade into the mute, and then fade out of the mute. So it's like a way of coming in and out of, of your of your speaking words. Yeah, you don't want to just chop those met those breaths out all together because then yeah. you're like a robot. It'll sound weird. Exactly. Uh, got, got a great question, Chris, from Stephen Shedra, who who asks, does one have to disable the internal microphone as well as enabling the USB mic? That's a great question. What do you say, Chris? That is a great question, and nine times out of ten, I'd say yes. And then once you unplug your USB microphone, it, your computer nine times out of ten will just reboot back to the uh, onboard microphone but always double check because we have I have seen cases where um, you disable your on your onboard microphone um, while the while the microphone is plugged in and then you unplug your USB microphone and then you're on a, a Skype call or, or what, what have you and no one can hear you on the other end because the microphone your internal board is is uh, disabled so I would I would definitely try just you know try a test try to uh, disable it with your, with your USB microphone in there and then unplug USB microphone and see if it just defaults back to it if it doesn't default back to it then go to your system preferences control panels highlight it and click back to default some computers and some operating softwares are are fidget, fidgety like that where you have to you know tell it what to do because it doesn't do it automatically for you and um, Another thing I should point out is that when you do configure your microphone to your computer, make sure the software is off. Because if you have your software loaded while you're configuring it to your computer, it won't recognize it. But most of the time when you do the configuration from your microphone to your computer first while all the software is not uh, up, and then you, you open the software, the software more than likely will recognize the microphone for you. Great answer, Chris. Okay, I got another question here from Susan Benninghoff. Hi, Susan. Good to hear from you again. Susan, Susan. wants to know if it's better to use a preamp into a mic plugged into the computer. She uses or tries to use a 402 VLZ3 preamp with Audacity, and she has a Mac. Go ahead, Chris. It's really um, what you're comfortable what you're comfortable using. If if you're using a, a mic pre, mic pre's are a little bit more um, I don't want to say complicated because they're not super complicated, but it's it's just a, another step for a beginner to, to learn. Where if you're just super new to the recording field and super new to voiceovers, a USB microphone is so much easier, like the like the Blue Spark or the Blue Yeti, where you just plug it in, configure it, and you're good to go. Where the the mic pre because uh, USB microphones have a mic, the mic pre basically built inside of it, so it's just another. You're eliminating another step by using a USB microphone. But if you already have the mic pre, then there's no sense in buying a USB microphone because you already have a mic pre. And as long as your computer is configured to it, it's just really what and how you work. Everyone's setup is different, really. It, it just depends how much money you want to spend, how good the microphone works for you. But if if you're happy with your quality, you know, uh, don't fix something that's not broke. Yeah, so certain microphones require a preamp. The better quality mics are going to require one. But a lot of these USB mics now are emulating some really, really good high quality mics. And of course, using a preamp, Chris, gives you a little more, it gives you more options. It's got independent volume control and things like that, which sometimes you don't have on a USB, correct? 
Ab absolutely. But even like the Blue Yeti, if you guys can see this, this has a really good volume control, and actually it has a headphone headphone output. So this, in a sense, is its own microphone and mic pre. So I mean, it, in two thousand, if this was ten years ago, I'd say yeah, you have to have a mic, uh, you have to have an interface. But for right now, for strictly for voiceovers. I I would go if uh, with the US if you're starting out with nothing I would just get a USB microphone it's easier but there is there you know some interfaces I am not familiar with the exact brand Susan has but some have two headphone outputs some have multiple ha multiple outputs so if you're sending it some monitors as well if you want to monitor it with 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 uh, studio speakers if you're happen to be re recording your husband or wife and they both and you both want to hear mo uh, have headphone mixes so there are uh, like Susan was saying there are benefits to using an interface but if it's just you recording a usb microphone is is really simplified way to go great and and by the way just to clarify the mic in the studio it's not a yeti it's it's a different kind of blue mic right it's one of the it's, ones. it's, a, it's, a, yeah, it's a blue spark the blue spark okay good okay here's a question from uh len cohen not to be It's Len Cohen, uh, C-O-W-A-N, the Reverend from Worcester, Mass. Hi, Len. Good to hear from you again. And he writes, sometimes while recording, he uses SoundForge. The sound coming through his headset is out of sync with his voice. He gets about a half a second delay, rendering a weird out-of-body experience. And this tends to grow up after a few minutes, but he wonders what's going on. Chris, can you help? Uh, yeah, I think I think I can help, Len. Um, I'm actually going to share my screen really quickly with you, and this this may solve a problem or it may not. Cause I don't know if he's using an, an, an external mixer like we're using here. We have, you know, we're, we use the Mackie Onyx here um, with multiple channels, but I think I might be able to help. So I'm going to share my screen really quickly. Um, <laughs> in control panels, where I was earlier, if you go to control panels and sound in recording. If you double click on the microphone, so um, actually let me, let me plug back in the blue microphone. Give me one second, Len. Sorry about that. Definitely want to be able to help you out. Um, okay, the microphone's plugged in. So, okay, control panel, sound, recording, Blue Yeti. Now double click on whatever microphone you're using in the control panel under sound, and then you want to go to listen. Now, if this is checked right here, if you can see, it says listen to device. If I were to hear, if I were to have this checked and you hit apply, you're hearing what's coming from the microphone in real time and then what is actually coming back out of SoundForge in real time. So it's two separate things that are causing your phase. So uh, um, go to your uh, system preferences, sound, recording, double click the microphone and click on listen. If this is checked right here, just uncheck it and click apply and then okay and then try that and see if that works that might be able to really help the cause but that's not i would say nine eight times out of ten that usually is what the problem is it's just it's just a phasing issue you're hearing the same source which is your voice coming from two different sources coming from the microphone and the playback coming from the software which in reality is like a few milliseconds off timing is what so it's causing that phase and it's causing that out of body experience. <laughs> Great, Chris, thanks. Okay, another question from Tom Backer, the Long Island voice. He says, "Can you advise those of us that use a DAW condenser mic, which which I guess is a digital audio workstation, right, Chris?" Yes. Yep. Um, what what should you do? He says he has a Studio Graphics microphone and a Lambda DAW. Go for it, Chris. I am not familiar with the Lambda DAW. I've n never heard of it. Doesn't mean it's not awesome, and doesn't mean that he, he uses it well. Um, we, we repeat the question for me. What was the, what's the Hang on. So All he right. wants to know. Tom Backer wants to know. Can you advise those of us that use a DAW condenser mic? He has a Studio Graphics microphone and a Lambda DAW. Um, what to do? I, mean, I don't know what he means by what to do, but um, if he, if he's, I can maybe simplify it. If he's asking what the advantages of using a DAW is, I think uh, the advantages of using like a, a digital performer, a Pro Tools, a Cubase, where you have multi multi tracks. That's if you're, you know, if a, if you get hired to do a job, which I'm sure he is. If if uh, if the if the talent 
if the client needs you to mix music, if they want to, if they want you to give them a completed file with music underneath it. That's the advantages of using a DAW. It's a multi-track digital workstation where you can have, you know, up to hundreds of tracks, which is a little overkill, but you can have up to 10 tracks if you're doing your own demo or if you're doing a commercial spot. Because sometimes clients will hire you to do, you know, a commercial spot and they want the finished product with music underneath it. Where in Audacity, you can't, you can do that. Um, in SoundForge, you can do it too, but it leaves you a little bit limited because it's m mainly a one-track recorder. Twisted Wave, you can do it. A, you can do it as well, but it's a, a little bit more uh, complicated because it's a one-track recorder. Where if you have a doll, most dolls are multi-track recorders. You can have multiple, multiple tracks, and that's how you know films are mixed, commercials are mixed, uh, televisions mixed. It's Uh, reverbs, effects, all kinds of things. I hope that answered your question. It was pretty vague, but I hope that helped. Okay, good. I got another question for you, Chris. This one comes from Paul. I think the name is Tom Chai Shai in Salem, uh, who uses a Scarlett 212 and Audacity. And he says he noticed that when uh, you were recording, Chris, it wasn't stereo. He's only ha always only had the mono recording, but what do you recommend? I definitely recommend mono. I have it's going to do for this hangout but if you're recording if you're recording uh straight voicing for voiceovers i would definitely stick with mono i i actually have a scarlet as well i love focus right uh, uh products they're they're unbelievable for the price uh, but i would stick with recording mono unless uh uh, asked otherwise. Sometimes we get requests where you know a phone system only accepts stereo, so that's why we'll have to record in stereo. In that case, I'll actually record it in mono and then just split it and pan it and export it in stereo or batch it in stereo in SoundForge or Pro Tools. Uh, but if you're recording in mono and it's working for you, I would just stick with mono. I just used I I recorded stereo because it was an easy easier configuration for today's hangout. Great, thanks, Chris. Uh, now, this one's from Karen Gersman. Hi, Karen. She says, I use GoldWave and my computer just updated to Windows 10. How do I make sure that everything is configured properly in GoldWave? First, I would go, I'm not familiar with GoldWave, but I would go to GoldWave's website and download the latest drivers, whatever drivers they have available. Um, always, even if it's a the last dated driver is you know seven eight months ago it's probably the latest driver and that's the biggest problem <laughs> I, i've updated my os uh, on, my, on my home studio on, on my mac and i'm like oh my god i don't have the latest drivers I'm, on my pro tools i'll be in the middle of mixing a film and my pro tools won't launch because i have a new control service and it and i don't have the driver so i you know uh <laughs> will find myself in a rut so always when you're upgrading your your uh operating software make sure you have all your ducks in a row where you know exactly what what drivers are available and make sure that it's compatible go to gold wave because uh I'll, I'll make an example um i think the newest software for mac is uh el capitan when i Or go, or go for Windows 7 to Windows 8. It work for that for the operating software. And then if you if you bought Gold Wave, you might have just wasted three hundred dollars. I've seen it happen, and you have to go backwards because you had you bought the software, you bought these serial licenses, but they won't work on the on the newest. And just because it's new, the newest so, the newest operating software, it doesn't mean a it's the stablest. It doesn't mean b is the best. So I would definitely make sure you have uh, all your ducks in a row first, and always check out your man your software manufacturer's website for the latest drivers but just to save to save yourself some headaches. That's great, Chris. Lots more questions, so we got to keep this moving. Uh, Jay North from uh, VoiceOver Seattle. Hi, Jay. Jay is Jerry. Yeah, Jay's a graduate of our VoiceOver Training Institute, uh, and he's working now in VoiceOver. He's doing great. He has a question. He says, uh, "Why, when he tries to reduce background noise, it sounds robotic?" And what's the great... best in Audacity? Go ahead, Chris. 
Um, what you got to do is not do so much um, noise reduction. What happens is it's called artifacts. It leaves the artifacts of what is being reduced behind because what, this, what the noise reduction software is doing, it's recognizing the frequency in which is the problematic. If it's a, a refrigerator just constantly on or, or just the outside tone or just a, a fan in your booth or whatever you're, wherever you're recording, um, it's basically doing it a little too much. So I would just... software in Audacity, but Isotope RX is what we use here at the Great Voice Company. It's you can get it for like two ninety nine for the uh, for the RX uh, level version, but you you want to just limit and don't do so much. So say, uh, example, you're at you're at reducing at ten, bring it down to about four and see how that sounds. Oh, we always play around with it, even go up to twenty and see how robotic that sounds. Because the more you the more you manipulate the the, the actual raw audio the less of quality you're going to be receiving. So I would say just, just play around with it and try not to do, like, uh, I think it's probably a threshold. Bring the threshold down a little bit more, and you'll, you'll get better results. That's great. I uh, got a question from Katrina Scott. Hi, Katrina. Katrina's been to our boot camp. She lives in Nolens, Louisiana. And uh, she was looking for an inexpensive way to deal with outside noises and a hollow-sounding room. And maybe, Chris, some of these things that you're, you're uh, talking about can get rid of that hollow sound. But she's got a cedar wood closet, which is perfect in size, but it sounds hollow, and she can hear cars outside sometimes. She's tried inexpensive padding, but she lives in a rental, so she's limited about what she can do. Do you have any quick fixes for her? Quick fix. up on you know blankets and try to cover yourself try to it might be uncomfortable but try to you know barrier yourself off with as many thick garments as possible and create a barrier between your mouth your source and the microphone and the outside world around you it's the, it's the best thing because you can get soundproofing foam but obviously it's just it just uh you know, absorbs the sound. So you want to try to absorb it as much as possible and create a barrier you know, uh, with, with yourself in the middle with your microphone. Great. Okay, I got a question here from uh, Kiana Bello. Hi, Kiana. She wants to know, I'm assuming it's a woman, um, that she uses Adobe Audition on her new Mac and, and she's paying for it every month. You know, those Adobe products have you on continuity they're gonna whack your credit card every month so she wants to know if we recommend using it or audacity and I want to put in a, a pitch for twisted wave if you're on a Mac my goodness you can buy twisted wave for what is it like 30 bucks that's what I use on my Mac uh, so I would just buy that be done with it and and uh, drop the Adobe audition what do you think Chris do you agree yeah, I 100% agree. Or you can even go with Pro Tools free because it's it's now available and it, it's free, and you don't need to have an account. You know, we're familiar with the Adobe process. We use Premiere for video editing, and it's great. But if you're just doing strictly just one track, two track voiceover recordings, like Susan said, Twisted Wave is very, very, very stable and is created for Mac, and it only works on Apple and Mac products. And then there's this Pro Tools free. It might be a little bit, a little bit more complicated, but you can always just record one track in Pro Tools. I think you get up to eight tracks, and it's free. You don't have to pay the nineteen ninety nine a month for Adobe Audition. Audition yeah. is. What you said? Sorry. I was gonna say yes. Got. Yeah. Uh, I interrupted you, but let me let me take this question. I'm I'm moving it along a little because you still sure. have one more point to make, uh, which is about how yep. common mistakes people make when they send files. But let's see if we can uh, breeze through these questions real quick, because there's a lot of them. Um, Munir Adhami uh, says he's not a beginner. He has an interface, just bought an XLR mic, which um, is not, it's, it's, it's the kind that you need with, a, with um, the interface. You know, an interface. And he says, do I need a mixer? He doesn't need a mixer, does he, Chris? No, you can just get an interface. There's actually super, super, super cheap interfaces out there, a little, like a little Mackie, where it looks like a, a little mixer, but it's an interface. You basically just plug it into your computer, uh, you plug the microphone right into the mixer, and there you go. You can get like a, a, a Focusrite Scarlet, like the lower levels, for like under 100 bucks. You can get uh, M Audio out, is out there. Go to Sweetwater or musiciansfriend.com and just go to recording interfaces. And there's, you know, there's probably I'd say ten on the market, maybe more for under a hundred bucks, around fifty bucks, and you'll be set. Yep. 
great. Uh, Barbara Daly said she's using an audio interface focus, right? Uh, in the sound setup, it says it doesn't have input, input controls. Is this correct? It, it's selected as her input device. She does have it as an input device in Twisted Wave. Can you help? That's a, yeah. In Twisted Wave, if if you if you're using an interface, it'll say uh, input device and then give the name. It should it should say focus right. If you're using a USB microphone, that's what it'll say. Whatever the brand of the microphone is. But if you're coming from a microphone into an interface, out of the interface into a computer, the computer is going to be recognizing your interface, not the microphone. So you're you're set. Great. Great. Okay, now I got a question from Cancun, Mexico, from Vanessa Lachumain. I think I pronounced it correctly. Well, que tal, Vanessa? Great to have you here. She wants to know how to treat her voice after the recording, not the editing, which she does, but she wants to know about equalizing and normalizing. What can you quickly say about that? I know it's a big topic. Yeah, what I would quickly, quickly, quickly say is just roll off some of your low end. Start, uh, if you go to EQ and you find whatever software you're using in the, in the software, if you go to your EQ, there will be a preset called a high pass filter where it basically just rolls off all the low end at around 120 hertz and it will just roll off all the low ends. All that noise and rumble, usually from just outside or just a fan or whatever, is between 30 hertz to 120. So quickly just put a high pass filter on it and process it and then normalizing it basically reaches the audio. If you, if you record your voice too low, when you normalize it, it maxes out the audio file to its highest peak without without distortion. So a little quick high pass filter, a little bit of normalizing, and you're set. <laughs> Easy for you to see. I can't hear her. Thanks, I have my mic muted. Well, it's easy for you uh, to say, Chris, you're talking about high-pass filters and stuff. A lot of people are probably saying, oh my goodness, what the heck is he talking about? I'm just starting out. I barely, I just bought my microphone. It's still in the case. Don't worry, guys. We're going to have some solutions for you coming up. And I'm telling you, we have worked with grandmothers and taught them how to record themselves successfully from home. This doesn't, it sounds a lot scarier and more complicated than it really is. For example, Anita Reese says, She's unable to have a home studio. Can you, uh, what can you do alternatively? You know, let me, I'll answer this real quick, Chris. Uh, I think if, if you're in a situation where you can't or don't want to have a home studio, you, you know, the solution is to make some sort of relationship with a local recording studio and see if you can get them to give you a special voice talent rate which some studios will do, you know, if you're willing to come in and work in odd hours that they haven't booked with other paying customers. Now it's going to, take some money off the profit that you're making from your career, but hey, there's always a workaround, right? And final question, Chris, I don't know if you can answer this quickly. Uh, it's from Bradley Highland Johns. Once he says, his time shift tool is not working as designed in a multi-tracked piece. He should be able to use it to slide the selected track and move it, but it only lets them move one track and then after that it will it will only move all the tracks. Is that too comp complicated a question to answer right now? Real quick? For right now, yeah. For right now, yeah. Uh, uh, time shift is really only session. You should be able just to click it with your hand tool in your software that you can click and drag and just click and drag it wherever. I don't know if that answers the question, but that's, that should be a question for another time, definitely. Because time, yeah. shifting, time shifting is speeding up and slowing down voices. <laughs> right. So, so, Brad, I would say that that's a question. Why don't you call the place where you bought the software and this program today. But, uh, Chris, we've got one more point that we promised we would help people with, and that is... Um, mistakes they make when they're sending their files and I know that this one surprised even me because sometimes you think you're sending the right file and it's not and you know you got to get this one right otherwise your customers aren't getting your recordings in and people aren't getting your auditions properly so what can you help us with for that 
Absolutely. I'm going to share my screen again. I'm going to go back to the audacity session that I had that I recorded my, uh, my lovely voice with. So you're in a session. You just recorded. You went through step one and step two. You, everything sounds great. Now, one of the biggest problems that the beginners is that they'll go, well, if, to start off, you want to go to file, and then in the file is all your save options. But people go to file and they'll see save project like oh okay I can save my project when you when you go to save project see how this window comes up it says you are saving an audacity project file saving a project creates a file that only audacity can open to save an audio file for other programs first click file export so when you save let me clarify it for you when you go to save project this is saving all of the information inside of this session so if you were to do edits or whatever whatever you're doing inside your session, when you save this project file, you'll wherever you save it on your desktop, you'll be able to, if you ever have to go back to it, you could um, open up the file and all your edits will be there. You can't really, you can't send a project file. So if you wanted to send an MP3 out of Audacity or Twisted Wave or almost every recording software, you want to go to up the file, and export and then once you go to export right here will give you options for wave for mp3 for flac most of the time we're going to be sending mp3s and wave files just for today i'm just going to hit wave and you always want to make sure where you're sending the file i'm going to send this to my desktop i'm going to call this uh hangout test double click hangout test i'm going to name this file test one I click save. It tells you your tracks will be mixed down to a stere to stereo channels when exporting. That's fine for right now because my session was set to stereo. If your session was set to mono, then it will, it will export it in mono. And click OK. This is all this metadata where if you want to type in any information for the audio file, you can put in there. I just put test, click OK, and then there you go. It's saved. Now, if I went to my desktop and I found that folder, it would be right in here. Let me find it. Uh, hang out, hang out, test, and right there, there's my audio file that I just saved. So <laughs> I would definitely say the biggest problem with saving is that making sure you're saving an audio file because you don't want to save a project file and send it, send it over, and the person or client on the other end not be able to open it up because it's a project file and not an audio file. That's pretty much the uh, biggest problem a lot of beginners have with uh, exporting audio. That's great, Chris. I mean, you just gave us so much value. I really, really appreciate it. And in a minute, I'm going to tell you how you can have Christopher Fox in person looking over your shoulder as you set up your home recording equipment. And I'm going to tell you about that in just a moment. But you just learned, aside from all these very specific questions that we helped you with, how to resolve the number one most annoying time-sucking mistake that voiceover beginners make when starting a home recording session, how to ensure your software and computers are compatible for broadcast quality audio each and every time, how to avoid the most common mistakes exporting and sending your files so every audition and job arrives in the best possible quality. And now you might be asking yourself, well, now what? What do I do? Uh, what's the next step? Well, actually, here at The Great Voice Company, we have um, a couple of them. The, you could join our voiceover training and uh, how to get your home studio set up. Among all the training you need and the demos and marketing advice and uh, meeting voice buyers, uh, but you can also come, tr you know, condense all of that and come to a fun, effective immersion experience and spend three days in the recording studio and in the studio with myself, with Chris, with Adriana Davis, award-winning producer. So you have fast, measurable progress. And that is my VoiceOver Bootcamp recording studio immersion experience. Now I've got one coming up in New York City in just a few weeks. It's June 18th through the 20th. The weather is fantastic. It's a great time to come to New York. And um, let me start by telling you, first of all, who this is not for. It is not for get-rich-quick dreamers who want overnight results. 
It's not for people who are not willing to work hard at growing their own voiceover business. It's not for people who think they know it all and can't take direction. It's not for people who are not willing to grow by investing in themselves and their future. And it's not for arrogant scene stealers who need to be the center of attention and who will disrupt the class. That's you. Let me tell you why I built this voiceover bootcamp recording studio immersion experience. I was looking for a way to help people who are busy. You know, you've got a, a job, you've got a lot going on in your life, and you want a way to jumpstart your career, to build momentum in one jam-packed weekend. You're looking for a place to network and to get support. You're looking for resources I wish I had when I was starting out. I mean, for Pete's sake, you heard my story about how I was riding the subways, frustrated, working three day jobs just to make ends meet. You're looking for a place where you can experience the thrill of working with the best professionals in a top recording studio. You see who I bring you. I mean, you just spent some time with Chris Fox and he'll be there at this boot camp. And, uh, you know, it is, we've been doing this for years. If you go to our website, you'll see some testimonials about this. Um, and the success stories are incredible. I mean, we get them each and every week for people who have been to boot camp. They're booking work now, and they tell us how that was fundamental in helping them kick their career. So let me tell you a little bit about the components of boot camp and, and how it works for you. We're going to be at Avatar Studios in New York City. This is literally the top, the best recording studio, if not world definitely in the country. I mean, this is where Paul McCartney goes, Springsteen goes, Tony Bennett goes, Lady Gaga goes. Actually, once recording as we were working. But uh, you're going to be up at the microphone right away from the very first day. It's not theory. You are hands-on. And you're having fun with your classmates learning my perfect performance method. On the second day, we devote the time to non-broadcast audio. This is the bread and butter of most voiceover talent. It's stuff that you don't even see on TV and radio, but it's corporate work that pays a lot of money. And this is the place where, you know, I built my career, where now 30 years in this business as a working voiceover professional, I've literally made millions of dollars with my voice. And we're going to give you an intro to all of that with award-winning producer Adriana Davis, uh, who will give you the, the download of everything you need to know to become a successful corporate non-broadcast voice talent and all those many niches that fall under that umbrella. You'll be up at the microphone, you'll be recording, and of course, you'll be spending a day working with an award-winning producer who has hired our students. And then on day three, it's all about tech check. You're going to bring your laptop, your home recording gear, right to uh, the New York Seminar Center, where we are on day three. You're going to set everything up under the watchful eyes of Chris Fox, who you met. And I am also going to walk you through my million-dollar marketing blueprint, step by step by step, so that it's not just theory. It's not just technique. You're not going to be like me when I started at you know, trying to audition just a little bit better than everybody else, you're going to know step by step how to take your talents and turn them into money, how to find the best clients, how to build a real voiceover business, a real business using your voice, which if you work it right, could really uh, be something significant for you in your life. Now, um, I want to give you some rates that people are paid for recent voiceover jobs, just so you understand what's possible here. Uh, so it's a 20 page non-broadcast corporate not narration that's non-union uh, has paid $750. Now these are rates from my own career, from my colleagues, from our students that are reporting in. Uh, not guaranteed, of course, your results might be different. All I can speak about is what I know. A local 60 second radio commercial for a small market, $75. A three-page non-broadcast training narration, $500. The voice of Christmas decorations for a rich guy in Florida. I love this one. $350. You know, you, during Christmas time, when you go down the street and there's always that dude who has all the Christmas decorations, uh, this particular guy actually had a closed-circuit radio station that played Christmas music and hired one of our students to be the narrator to wish everybody a, a Merry Christmas. She made $350 from that. 
Um, also, I want to tell you about uh, e-learning. So one hour of finished audio for e-learning is $1,200 on average. Audiobook, it's the rate per finished hours. Again, this varies, but um, you're looking at finished hours of six to eight hours per book, $150 to $300 per finished hour. Uh, a huge e-learning project that took one year to record from home, $90,000. A four-page medical narration, $750. A video game residual check, that was paid to a union voice talent, $100,000, an 80-page business ebook for a financial advisor, $4,500, a large text-to-speech application for IBM, $10,000, and they flew the talent to Scotland to record it. So these, again, these are not guaranteed. These are based on uh, my own career, my colleagues, our students, things that are reported to us. Your results may be different, they may be better, uh, or they might be different. So really where you make your money in voiceover is in lifetime customer value. The money's really made in repeat business. So you're doing a job to gain a customer who will come back again and again and again. And I can tell you that one of my Fortune 100 customers had a lifetime value of $1.2 million. It started with $350 job and they came back again and again over a 12 year period. And I made over a million dollars just from one customer and I have hundreds of them. Now, I didn't keep all that money. <laughs> I just don't have a lot of it today, but that's what's possible for you in this business. Many of my customers have a six-figure lifetime value, and I'm keeping them for 5, 10, 15, or 20 years. And that's serious lifestyle money. That's a, a real business if you work it that way. And that's what I teach you in the boot camp. You're following in my footsteps. I'm showing you exactly how to do this. Now, how much does the boot camp cost? What's your investment? You saw what's possible. Uh, so it's really modest when you compare. And it's uh, $1,247 for the boot camp for the three days of training, or you can break that up into two monthly payments if you prefer. Um, and look, if you're happy with pocket change, $75 here, $100 there, you can probably learn what you need in the library or from YouTube videos. I mean, this boot camp is not for you. But if you intend to make voice, see the value of the voice of our boot camp recording studio immersion experience, and it really is going to pay for itself in a job or two said if you register by Friday, this Friday, tomorrow, May 27, uh, you can break your tuition into two monthly payments of $6.95 with a balance due in two weeks on Friday, June 10th, or you can pay it full at $12.47 and save $1.43 and tell you how to do that. You're going to give us a call at The Great Voice Company, which is 1-800-333-8108, or reach out to Mark. Uh, talent at greatvoice.com or go to our website greatvoice.com and what I'll do afterwards I'm going to send you a link to um, the page we put up about the boot camp the upcoming boot camp so you can take advantage of that and these bonuses special bonuses I've got for you and they are for everybody that registers as a result of this Google Hangout you're going to get a free 30-minute consultation with Christopher Fox, who you just met by Skype, which is a $250 value where he can really go deep and troubleshoot some of your issues or even help you get set up. And the first five people to register uh, will get a 30-minute strategy call with me to kick off your new voiceover career. And I mean, it's really priceless. I've been doing this for 30 years. You can imagine the know-how that I have. Um, so I can't even put a value on that. But uh, these are the two bonuses we want to give you to, to reward you for taking fast action. Um, look. ...based career behind the microphone. A life where you call the shots, where every day is a new adventure, where you have confidence, where you have independence, where you have a sense of security that you have. You have a side gig that can really make a significant difference in your life. And here's how to register. Again, you call us up at 800-333-8108 
or email talent at greatvoice.com. And the link, which again, I'll email to you, but it's greatvoice.com slash voice dash over dash events. And you can get those bonuses and get going and grab a seat in our upcoming boot camp, which is June 18th through 20th in New York City. Choose your payment plan, get the fast action bonuses with Chris and with me, and spend three exciting, fun-filled days in New York City, June 18th through 20th. I hope I see you there. I hope this is not, you know, yours is not a life where you have regrets and you're saying, wow, what would have happened if I could have, if I should have. Even if you've started already, I mean, are, can you honestly say that things are working out for you as well as they should? A lot of people who who are, you know, somewhere in the middle of their voiceover careers come to boot camp to get turbocharged, to get information about how they can improve what they're already doing. Like I did when I met Bob, you know, I was already working in voiceover, but I was struggling. And once he, you know, he talked to me and gave me those key distinctions for the light bulb to go off, my goodness, my career took off. And that's what we're seeing with our students. I mean, they are shortening their time to market. And when they get there, they know exactly what to do for everything from the performance skills to their home studio recording. I mean, that's not even a, an issue for them anymore to most importantly, setting up their marketing career and getting top dollar for the work that they do. So uh, it's 800-333-8108 is our phone number. Talent at greatvoice.com. We'll put you in touch with Mark, our talent advisor. And I will send you the link as well if you go to greatvoice.com. Actually, there's a link on the homepage for the uh, voiceover bootcamp. So guys, it's been a pleasure. I so enjoyed working with you. Thank you very much for coming. And I hope to meet with you and work with you in person really soon. Bye-bye. I'm Susan Berkeley from Great Voice.